Hey guys, this is Bharat and welcome to Bharat's Kitchen with how to make tomato puree. In this video, I'm going to show you how commercial tomato puree is different from the homemade and why does it taste different. Okay, so let's begin with it. So first, we obviously going to need some tomatoes. And I've deliberately taken two varieties here. One is very similar to the Roma or the Big Mama tomatoes which are commonly used in making sauces and they have high pectin content due to high acid levels. Next we have the Sweet 100 which is in the family of cherry tomatoes. These have low pectin content and are naturally more sweeter. Now whether you believe me or not, tomatoes are a citrus fruit which is basically a combination of sourness and sweetness. Generally, no matter what type of tomato you use, their pH always remains between 4 to 4.5. But if you look at a commercial tomato puree, its pH is quite low, which makes it more acidic and even tend towards tartness, which is very similar to yogurt. You might have noticed that in Indian gravies, some recipes call for only yogurt, some call for only tomatoes, and sometimes they both are used together. But the secret of Indian gravies like Makhni gravy lies behind the matter puree. Now I won't bore you with all the information I have. I'll try to explain as the recipe progresses. So first we're gonna wash the tomatoes properly and remove the core or the nub. Next, slice across at the bottom of the tomatoes so that we can easily remove the skin later on. Now the big problem is how to get that perfect red color of tomato puree like the store bought one. There are one of three things or all the three things that you can do here. First, you can use a beetroot while boiling the tomatoes. Second is blanching the tomatoes or transferring the tomatoes to ice cold water after boiling. And the third is to add vinegar or citric acid to preserve color. So in this video, I'm going to use beetroot and citric acid to bring out that color. You can choose any one of the method and you'll get more information about them and how to use them on my website. So don't worry about it. Anyways, so we're going to need to pressure cook the tomatoes with some beetroot and some water. Just make sure you don't add a lot of water or else the flavor will be diluted need to give the tomatoes one whistle and then let the pressure cooker depressurize naturally. Now you can see that the skin of the tomatoes are easily coming off and at this point you can add tomatoes to the ice cold water to preserve the color and remove the skin. Further grind the tomatoes in a blender to puree them. And yes, I know, it looks a little bit orange than red. But wait, we still have one last step to do. That is to cook the tomatoes. So, I'm gonna take a large pan and first, we're gonna cook off the excess water that was left inside the pressure cooker. Make sure you strain the water first. And at this point, also add some salt to this tomato infused water. Cook until the water is reduced to half and then add the tomato puree and make sure that you strain the puree as well so that all the seeds can be removed. Now again cook the puree on a low flame for about 5 minutes or until it starts to thicken a little bit. Finally turn the flame off and to preserve this puree and enhance the flavour Add some citric acid or some balsamic vinegar or even your normal white vinegar. This will help reduce the bacterial growth but trust me, it also enhances the taste as well like it happens in the case of ketchup. Now the last tip is that you can add some sugar in this also to balance the flavour and bring out that fruitiness that I was earlier talking about. But only if you're using more acidic tomatoes. Since I have used a variety of tomatoes here, I don't need to add sugar in this. 
so there you are guys how to make the mado puree at home as always you'll find all the list of ingredients and their measurements and the reason behind a lot of things on my website and if you like this video do give it a thumbs up until then i'll see you all next time